Okay, here we are um, on a rainy Sunday morning. We've had a wicked spell of rain here in the state of Maine the last two or three weeks. A few sunny days interspersed, but it rained, just poured all day yesterday afternoon and all through the night and it's kind of finally letting up. Um, there's a, we're at a Black's Grove uh, woodlot in Mariahville, Maine, which is uh, sort of central Hancock County. A different forest type than what we sometimes film when you see at Wikipedia Woods up in Sebec. Hemlock, spruce, uh, good northern hardwood. This is a really a really nice woodlot for a lot of reasons. This is where we have done a lot of weevil spraying. We've done planting here. And so there's we're in a particular spot here that when we did the pre-harvest inventory. Uh, we found a stand that was dominated by diseased beech and we figured okay well here's a here's gonna be like a three or four acre patch opening that will just result from harvesting all the diseased beech so we're I don't think here in this particular spot there are any resistant ones on other parts of the lot there are anyway we we marked a timber sale here it was a 2015 in October early October it, the day the harvester showed up it rained six inches he went home after an hour because he could, literally could not see the first time we sent him home. The second time, of course, was with a bomb cyclone two years later in Wicked. Nevertheless, we have a nice sale here. We cut 300 cores or so. And this, so this patch has been a subject of a lot of silvicultural activity. Uh, most recently this morning, we did get from the Maine Forest Service, we got uh, 120 spruce containerized seedlings, 80 red spruce that we planted at Wikipedia a couple weeks ago. And then we ended up with some bonus white spruce, which, uh, you know, is, grows a little faster, not quite as shade tolerant, arguably not as well climate adapted, but you know, they were nice trees. These are from the J.D. Irving Nursery in New Brunswick. So they've been sitting, it's like, we need to get these planted. So this planting in rain is one of the, Rain days, you don't call when you're planting, right? When you get a rain day, you go put the trees in, right? Because it's perfect planting weather. The soil is moist. Every one of these is going to thrive. So this is uh, in, in order, maybe not in any particular order here. Here's a white spruce that we just planted, a containerized seedling. Those are just uh, like uh, six months in the greenhouse, or maybe not even that long, and then out they come. You can see it's white spruce. You can see the new growth there, the fresh uh, flushing. White spruce, of course, flushes earlier than the red. This is, what, June 21st, I think. So, it's a little late to plant, but, you know, they're given all this rainfall, this is going to be just fine. Now, if you look, if you pan around here at the canopy, you will see that, of course, that just cutting the beach, and this was eight years ago now, uh, left a lot of pole-sized growing stock of, uh, what, maple, ash, some hemlock, um, uh, scattered spruces, uh, you know, so the northern hardwood hemlock community, mostly these were northern hardwoods, and they have really responded, and they're, of course, no, I think of those as tall regeneration, two rotation trees. Uh, in the gap were some very large big tooth aspens, we harvested all them because they were mature. They have suckered, um, and, but, but of course, m imagine this right after the harvest eight years ago, it was pretty open. So we ordered, uh, this is our first planting project where we got uh, a bunch of uh, bare root white pine and red oak from the New Hampshire nursery, like a thousand trees. We put a lot of them in on this property. Um, this was before I d fully appreciated how bad deer herbivory was. So we planted the oaks without tubes. Very few of them lived. We can occasionally find one or two. And then we came back and, and established, put tubes over the survivors. Um, we then came back, uh, so here's one of these trees right here. This is, a, this is what you want to see, right? This is just a great outcome. This is a, what, it'd be an eight year old from planting. Northern red oak that's now well out of the tube uh, that, uh, and above the deer. The tubes, of course, are meant to prevent deer browsing. So that, that's good. I wish this were a more common thing. Uh, a lot of the tubes out here, we of course we found that the wooden, some of the wooden stakes don't last long enough. That's a bad practice. You need the plastic stakes. Lots of things as we've on the learning curve here. This white pine in the foreground is, was also planted. These were big, uh, three O stock had large root systems. They were difficult to plant, but they sure grew well afterwards. 
and and you can see uh, maybe you can't see but if you out through the gap there there's a lot of these pines we have because of difficult access here we have not been spraying these for weevil and you can see some of them have been nipped by deer some of them have been weevil so the we have a lot of corrective pruning to do here so the as much silviculture as we've applied here uh, we're far from done and you can see we're still planting trees in some of these openings um, Another thing we need to do that we have not done here mostly is, and we just put up a video on this, uh, some of the red maple being very vigorous, the harvested red maple, of course, sprouted. So there's an eight year old sprout clump of red maple. That needs to be thinned to a single stem in the back, and we will do that. We'll bring our backpack chainsaw out here and uh, just thin that, and then we'll have a red maple crop tree there instead of a clump. There's another one. Um, other thing we've done here is uh, beach control, and this is long ago enough where the the beaches are almost all gone. But this was actually, of course, once you remove the merchantable beaches, off there's usually almost always a dense understory of shrubby saplings. So we came through here initially, did hack and squirt with a hatchet, thought that was laborious, and then we fired that backpack chainsaw. That was much more effective. So we came through here and polished off all the remaining beach, sprayed the stumps. There's still beach out here. You never get rid of all of them, and you wouldn't want to, right? I mean, you, there's no, nothing wrong with having a few beaches out there. There's some that are offending um, that we will probably come, when we come back to do the uh, maple uh, sprunk clump uh, thinning, there's some aspens that have grown into the gaps in places. Other places, uh, it looks like they're not going to make it because the residual trees are now overtopping them. Aspen starts being very shade intolerant. Um, here's another, what else to show here? So this is a new, this was a planting in 2021 of a red oak. And it's, it's only up to about right here after two growing seasons, and but it's alive and the deer are not chewing on it, so that will probably make it. Uh, what else to show here? I guess that maybe uh, is, is it. So basically enrichment planting in a gap to try to convert the composition from beech to uh, more long-lived, uh, higher value, uh, climate adapted species and it seems to be working more than I thought uh, this was a tough one because of the difficult planting but you know li little by little there's trees growing here okay we got the mouse here hamming it up again still on the scene